Black Panther, the King of Wakanda, and Deadpool, the Merc with a Mouth. One is a stoic, noble king, and one of the most brilliant minds in the Marvel Universe, a selfless hero who puts the lives of others before his own. The other is Deadpool. He's a nonsense spouting ninja assassin. Naturally, these two icons would never get along, which is why the slapstick miniseries that brought these two stars together involved plenty of decapitation, dismembered limbs, and smack talk. Let's jump in and catch you up on this wild story. Death of a Mailman the story begins with T'Challa the Black Panther wondering what makes a king. Was it the death of his father, or was it something he had to earn, and if so, had he ever earned it? But he attempted to put his thoughts about his worthiness aside. He and his sister Shuri went out on the streets of Wakanda to celebrate their culture's Night of the Dead, a mix between Halloween and Dia de los Muertos. Out in the city streets, the people of Wakanda remembered their departed loved ones and dressed up in costumes. Some dressed like monsters and spirits, while others dressed up as superheroes like the Avengers. When T'Challa noticed a young girl dressed as Black Panther, he offered her some authentic American candy, joking that it was essentially a small amount of poison, but the Black Panther was strong enough to take it. The little girl began to cry because she had nothing to give her king in return. T'Challa reassured her, saying, Do not cry, little panther. You have given me everything. While Black Panther was busy trying to stop a child from crying, Deadpool was making a whole bus of children cry. The merc with a mouth was careening across New York City Bridge in a school bus full of kids while reading a book and being chased by the supervillain The Wrecker. The Wrecker planned to hold a bus of private school students for ransom, but Deadpool, inspired by the kid's book he was reading to try his hand at civic responsibility, was out to rescue them. As the bus and Wrecker's bulldozer sped down the city streets, the Fantastic Four's beloved mailman Willie Lumpkin was out delivering joy to the people of New York. We're going to get back into the action now, but just keep Willie in mind because what happens to him is key to the entire story. Unfortunately, this beloved friendly neighborhood mailman was about to get caught in the crossfire. After sitting one of the school kids in the driver's seat, Deadpool broke down the bus's back door and lit a thermite grenade. Triumphantly, he jumped through the air, shouting his favorite cartoon catchphrase, Let's get dangerous. He didn't get very far before smacking right into the swinging wrecking ball, but the heat of the thermite grenade melted the chain and sent Deadpool and the wrecking ball swinging into the air. The ball crashed into the wrecker's bulldozer, stopping the supervillain. Meanwhile, the school bus crashed into a nearby building. As shards of glass flew through the air from the crash, Deadpool stole the wrecker's enchanted crowbar, the source of the villain's super strength. As Deadpool noted on the page, this crowbar was going to be significant to the plot later, so I had to make sure I mentioned it. Deadpool had no chance to celebrate, though, because one of the school kids pointed out that Willie Lumpkin, the mailman, had been stabbed by a shard of glass. With pieces broken off inside of him, only inches from his heart, it didn't look good for old Willie. After taking Willie to the hospital and posing as his son, Deadpool Lumpkin, the doctor suggested an experimental surgery. Tony Stark had revolutionized the technique for removing shrapnel from near the heart. The catch? It required vibranium, the rare metal found only in Black Panther's kingdom, Wakanda. Feeling guilty, Deadpool vowed to get the vibranium needed to save Willy. Naturally, being Deadpool, he had a terrible plan. A small misunderstanding. Back in Wakanda, T'Challa was toying with a new experimental technology he called Star Cells. This incredibly precise laser, which he intended to use for medical purposes, simultaneously healed whatever it cut. T'Challa explained how it worked with some super science techno babble about nanites, but that's not as important as the basic idea. It heals and cuts at the same time. The experiments were cut short when the merc with a mouth came to Wakanda with a smile drawn into his mask and a demand to see the king himself. Black Panther demanded to know how Deadpool was able to get past his kingdom's defenses. Deadpool explained how he managed to sneak in, slipping into some elephant pajamas and joining a shipment of elephants on their way to a conservation center in Wakanda. His costume and attempts to move to blend in didn't convince the workers loading the plane, but their day was over and they decided just to let the weird guy in the costume go about his business. T'Challa was not amused by the story and interrupted, now more interested in knowing what Deadpool actually wanted. When Wade explained that he was looking for an inch of vibranium, Black Panther pointed out that that was the size of a bullet. Deadpool assured Black Panther it wasn't like that, but instead of explaining why he wanted the vibranium, he went into a monologue about how things were going to go from there. There was going to be a small misunderstanding, they would fight, but eventually they were going to team up against the mutual threat, so why not skip to the point where they work things out? Pretty predictable superhero team-up stuff so far? Don't worry, things go off the rails soon enough. You're going to want to stay tuned to find out how Deadpool ended up with a zebra head for an arm. T'Challa refused to help Wade, saying he could peer into his soul and only saw a murderer and a thief. 
Annoyed at not getting what he wanted and not getting a top billing in the book's title, Deadpool attacked Black Panther, shouting that it was now time for the foretold small misunderstanding. But Black Panther was ready. He ducked under Deadpool's sword attack, kicked Deadpool in the jaw, and threw him so hard into the wall that he cracked the stone. That is the stupidest thing you have ever done, T'Challa taunted. Deadpool kept attacking, but T'Challa was ready. He shot Wade with the Star Cell's laser, a massive blast that sliced Deadpool's right arm clean off his body. This normally would not be a problem for Deadpool, but somehow the star cells were neutralizing Deadpool's healing abilities, meaning his arm was not regrowing like it normally would. Black Panther was not surprised. The star cells suppressed Deadpool's cellular regeneration to halt the spread of cancerous tissue. Deadpool demanded the King of Wakanda stop talking nerd and tell him what was happening. Black Panther believed that when Deadpool heals, it is the cancer ravaging his body that grew back, not the living tissue. In simpler terms, Panther explained, You never had a healing factor, you have a dying factor. Panther refused to give Wade his arm back, believing the unique nature of his ability would lead to more scientific breakthroughs. Wade tried another sneak attack, but T'Challa activated the mercenary's teleportation device, hidden in one of his many useful pouches but unused for many years. Deadpool reappeared in the air somewhere in the outskirts of Wakanda and then crashed to the ground. Now Deadpool was really mad. You want to know how somebody gets to be king? Because I know how. You cut the head off of a king. <gasps> Dramatic cliffhanger. But before we move on to the big fight, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload and smash that like button for some more plot armor comics. A big fight. Back in Wakanda, T'Challa studied Deadpool's arm, confirming that the regeneration abilities were a byproduct of his hypermutated cancer. This is why Wade only ever grew back disfigured tissue, but it turns out that when combined with the self-replicating nanites in the star cells, they didn't just stop the spread of Deadpool's cancer but froze all degeneration completely. The greatest discovery in human history too, Deadpool. Out in the wilds of Africa, Deadpool was busy offering money to some local tour guides who were desperate enough to take American poachers big game hunting. Wade offered them a big bundle of black market cryptocurrency for their jeep so they wouldn't have to help out the poachers anymore. The guides agreed, but the poacher protested. Without the jeep, how are they going to carry their zebra trophy back home? Deadpool thought for a moment, then told the poacher he was starting to see the appeal of taking trophies. He then sliced off one of the man's arms. Wade was ready to attach the hunter's dismembered limb to his body as a replacement arm when he noticed that the zebra that had been shot was still alive. Deadpool saw his chance to be a hero and save an innocent creature. Curse my big, mushy heart, Deadpool said as he tossed the arm away and raised his sword. Now it was time for Deadpool to head back to Wakanda and get his revenge. Wade sped toward T'Challa's castle, singing his own dramatic music. But T'Challa was busy feeling sorry for himself, asking his mother if he was the greatest of the Black Panthers while training against holograms of the Avengers. It wasn't about vanity, but he worried that without an heir, he left Wakanda vulnerable. If I am truly the strongest protector Wakanda has ever known, he wondered. If I found a way to remain so, would it not be logical for me to… But he didn't have time to finish his question before an explosion rocked the palace. From the wreckage stepped Black Panther's newest nemesis, Deadpool. Now fitted out with a zebra head for an arm, Wade gave his dramatic entrance line, Hey, T'Challa, what's black and white and red all over? Now it was time for the big superhero fight. Sword slashed, claws swiped, vibranium katunged against steel, Deadpool chatted away as Black Panther fought in stoic silence. But in fact, Wade had been fighting one of Panther's holograms. With his enemy distracted, Black Panther snuck up behind Deadpool and knocked him down with a punch to the back of the head. Wade tried to stop the fight, saying that they could have skipped this whole ordeal if T'Challa had just believed that he wanted the vibranium for good reasons. But Black Panther was done listening. Believe you, T'Challa shouted. You believe in nothing. You have no country, you have no family, no legacy to uphold, no gods. You don't even carry the weight of your own death. With that, he slammed Deadpool to the ground. There is no you to believe. He then turned his attention to the zebra on Deadpool's arm. He was disgusted by Wade's dismemberment of the innocent creature for a joke. I should finish dismembering you and fire the pieces into space. Panther spat in disgust. Talk about harsh, but T'Challa was not exactly wrong about Deadpool. After all, he was a mercenary willing to kill anyone for the right price and has fought alongside villains as well as heroes. Harsh though Panther might have been, it was clear Wade was taking the hero's criticism to heart. He wanted to be better, but he couldn't figure out how. Slashed up and bleeding, Wade tried to explain that he wasn't walking around with the zebra arm for laughs. He was actually trying to do a nice thing. He had saved the poor little critter from poachers and attached its head to him to keep it alive. 
T'Challa was struck by Wade's explanation and let the assassin go. He told Deadpool to get up and follow him. What, is, is that it? Wade asked, looking at his zebra hand in confusion. We're done versusing already? Black Panther explained that he was taking Deadpool back to the lab to reattach his arm, but then it was time to leave Wakanda forever. Wade was not willing to leave without the vibranium he came for. Before the two could get into another fight, Okoye, the head of the Wakanda Guard, interrupted with news that a private plane over Wakandan airspace had been blown up. The culprit? A pumpkin bomb throwing Spider-Man villain. But no, not the famous one you're thinking of. This was Jack O'Lantern, whose name pretty much explains his whole deal. He wears a flaming pumpkin head and throws pumpkin bombs and generally likes to make life difficult for his superheroes. Deadpool called it. Now came the next phase of the team-up. A mutual threat. There have been many people who have worn the pumpkin head of Jack O'Lantern. The most recent was a man named only Jack, who was raised by the deadly villain the Crime Master. When Jack first put on the pumpkin, he killed all the other men who had dared to call themselves Jack-o'-lantern. This version of the character has also died a few times. After a recent near-death experience, he had received expensive reconstructive surgery. Doctors and psychiatrists were using Jack as a test subject in an experimental rehabilitation program to reintegrate supervillains into society. But with his brain scrambled from the multiple resurrections, he felt disconnected from the boring 9-to-5 workdays. He felt like he was not truly alive and longed to feel something again. Jack began to admire Deadpool, who lived every moment to the fullest, randomly engaging in whatever he desired. So one day, Jack decided he was finished sleepwalking through life. He stood up from his desk and casually announced to his colleagues that he was going to kill their boss, Larry. A few moments and screams later, Jack was done with the boring life. Back in the present day, Shuri had helped attach the zebra to a new cybernetic body while Black Panther resumed his heart-to-heart -heart with his mother. He explained that he had cured death and wondered if it made him arrogant to think about using it. T'Challa's mother assured him that whatever choice he made would be the right one, but she warned that reigning too long could come with a cost, the freedom of future generations to choose their ruler. As he spoke with his mother, Shuri was done with a zebra and reattaching Deadpool's arm. When Okoye announced a mysterious attack on Wakandan soil, Black Panther knew Deadpool's arrival was connected. He had Deadpool released from Wakandan prison and the two raced to stop Jack-o'-lantern who was destroying innocent farms and their endangered animals. On the flight there, Deadpool suggested his reward for helping Wakanda should be a piece of vibranium. Black Panther revealed that he knew all along why Deadpool wanted the rare metal. But the King of Wakanda did not trust Deadpool's recklessness after having seen what happened to Willy Lumpkin. And besides that, he did not believe the experimental procedure would work on someone as old and as frail as Willy Lumpkin. Black Panther explained to Deadpool that Lumpkin's death was just a reality he would have to learn to deal with. Deadpool, though, never learned how to live in reality and continued believing he could clean up his mess and clear himself of his guilt. It's almost like the two were building a bit of respect for each other at this point, but don't get used to it because pretty soon Deadpool would force Black Panther to cut off his head. Panther was horrified by the act of vandalism and the death of the endangered creatures. What kind of animal would do this? He wondered. Meanwhile, Deadpool was more distracted by the fact that a rhino farm would need a scarecrow. That's Jack-o'-lantern, you idiot! Panther shouted. Deadpool protested being called an idiot, but was interrupted when Jack plunged a sickle right into the middle of Wade's skull with a sickening chunk. Panther attacked, calling Jack-o'-lantern a monster, which only amused the villain who laughed and screamed, Monster, ghoulie, the thing that goes thump in the night, the stuff of nightmares. He was having the maniacal time of his life. Jack pounced on Panther and released a green acid from his open pumpkin mouth that began to burn through the Wakandan King's vibranium armor. Ugh, gross. But Jack had not accounted for Deadpool's healing power, who came from behind and slashed at the villain while shouting, Marzipan! His words were a little messed up because of the sickle sticking out of his brain. Jack then turned his attention to his true prey, Deadpool, and unleashed a blast of flames from his hands that jar broiled and murk with a mouth. This gave Black Panther the opportunity to take hold of Jack's wrist and point it at his big pumpkin head, burning the bad guy and knocking him out. With the battle won, Deadpool waved T'Challa down saying, Good kitty! Now you, blog poster! T'Challa corrected him. His name was Black Panther. Yes, hell brain boo boo! Deadpool continued. T'Challa removed the sickle from Deadpool's head and told him to make sure the jack o' lantern was subdued. While T'Challa tried to assure the young child who witnessed the battle that everything was alright, Deadpool proceeded to subdue jack o' lantern in typical Deadpool fashion with a bullet to the brain. T'Challa was furious at Deadpool for his violent extremes and for traumatizing the young child. He punched Deadpool across the face. This is how you repay my trust? He asked. With his broken moral compass, Deadpool was not understanding why Black Panther was mad. After all, they won. I said subdue him so that he could face justice. That is what a hero would do. 
I did not tell you to commit murder in front of a child. Dealing with Deadpool convinced Black Panther. As long as there was evil in the world that cannot die, there must be someone there to stop him. He would use the star cells to remain king forever. When Deadpool threatened T'Challa's life, the king acted swiftly, slicing Wade's head off his body with one powerful blow. I told you from the start there were going to be dismemberments. As you can tell by now, these two characters don't exactly get along, and that's what makes them a fun story because it's not quite your typical Marvel team-up. Deadpool just can't seem to wrap his head around how to be noble, and Black Panther, the noblest hero in the world, cannot stand being around an immoral assassin. The Panther Pool. Or Dead Panther? No, Panther Pool. Unfortunately for T'Challa, cutting off Deadpool's head is not an effective way to shut him up, and he spent the whole flight back to the Wakandan Palace annoying Black Panther with jokes. Once back in Wakanda and Deadpool was restrained, T'Challa reattached Wade's head, joking that he couldn't risk Wade growing a second body or worse, a second mouth if left in two. Strapped to a table, Wade warned T'Challa to let him go or there would be dire consequences. One of the pouches in his belt was full of C4 connected to a 24-hour dead man's switch, which required Deadpool to deactivate it, and time was almost up. What's that old saying about playing with someone who has nothing to lose? Asked Deadpool. All oh, right don't. Then kaboom! Big explosion, crumbling walls, and an escaping assassin. Not exactly part of the classic team-up formula. Black Panther crawled out from the rubble, his vibranium armor now supercharged by the kinetic force of the explosion. He vowed to bring Deadpool to justice and chased him through the halls. The Panther attempted to engage Deadpool in combat, but the assassin activated his teleportation device and ported away. He found himself transported into Wakanda's armory, complete with an experimental new Black Panther suit. Naturally, Deadpool had to put it on. After struggling with the Wakandan writing on the suit's interface, Deadpool managed to get the suit working and announced the arrival of Panther Pool. Or maybe Dead Panther was a better name. No, he liked Panther Pool better. T'Challa then arrived on the scene and attempted to use the Star Cell Blaster on Wade again, but the new armor absorbed the blast. Now it was down to a fist fight, or claw fight. While Black Panther was out for justice, Deadpool was just excited by the new matching outfits. We gotta get a selfie! With his new feline threads, Wade was an even match for T'Challa. Tired of the stalemate, Deadpool activated his teleporter once more and disappeared. And this time, he hit the random teleportation jackpot. He was smack dab in the middle of a massive vibranium mine in the heart of a nearby mountain. Just one question remained. How do you mine a rock that absorbs all vibration and can't be cut? Cue the mystical crowbar from way back in the beginning of the story. Deadpool did tell us it was going to be significant to the plot after all. He grabbed the enchanted crowbar and slammed it hard against the rock, but nothing broke off. Instead, the entire mine began to vibrate, as if the whole mountain was reacting to the crowbar's enchanted metal and resonating to its mysterious frequency. It just so happened Deadpool's unpredictable broken teleporter was also unleashing a huge amount of teleportation energy. Thanks for the monologue recap, Wade. With this unexpected mix of mysticism and science, Deadpool and the entire mountain, including the vibranium mine, were transported to Paramus, New Jersey. Surely Black Panther will understand it was an accident, right? Best buds? Deadpool naturally attempted to take advantage of this strange situation by putting up a stand offering to sell vibranium for $1 million per pound. When a curious passerby inquired about a free sample, Deadpool was happy to oblige, if the guy had any mining material he could use. This dubious business transaction was quickly interrupted by Black Panther's arrival, who told the passerby to leave. As T'Challa approached, Wade began offering his sincere apologies for stealing something priceless. But I swear, Deadpool explained, I had no idea both of our movie franchises were going to use the same arms cross superhero salute. But T'Challa was done with the nonsense and formally declared war against Wade Wilson. At these words, Wade launched himself in front of an oncoming truck which threw him into the air like a rag doll. With his panther pool suit charged up by the kinetic energy of the impact, Wade slammed his fist into the ground. The highway shattered beneath T'Challa's feet. It looked like Panther Pool had the upper hand, but with Shuri's help back in Wakanda, they hacked into Panther Pool's suit. She deactivated the armor, leaving Wade vulnerable again. Now all Black Panther had to do was grab Deadpool's teleporter and the Wrecker's mystical crowbar to put the mountain back where it belonged. Give me the crowbar, T'Challa commanded. Deadpool, being a natural-born team player, did as he was asked violently. He hit Black Panther across the face with a crowbar, blaming the king for setting him up too perfectly for a visual gag. With that, the final battle was on. On top of speeding traffic, they traded blows, with T'Challa warning that Deadpool was putting even more lives in danger with his actions. You can't fix this, he shouted. You are the problem. How many more Willy Dumpkins is it going to take? But Deadpool didn't want to hear it. 
They were in his territory now, and this was not going to be the kind of superhero fight that ended in a draw. Deadpool wins. He tackled Black Panther, knocking both of them off the highway and crashing into a nearby cemetery. This was a mistake, T'Challa warned, because that meant they were in his territory. Recently, he had been made King of the Dead by the Panther God Bast, which gave him the knowledge and power of all of the dead Black Panthers in history. T'Challa taunted Wade, wondering why he stopped using the teleporter for so many years. You stopped because you were afraid, T'Challa said. It's one thing to grow back from a limb or a head, but to be reassembled from entirely new matter? How can you be sure you are really you? Perhaps you died the first time you teleported. What does that make you now? A copy of a copy. But do not fear, Wilson. You still have a soul. It's been waiting for you here the whole time. There, in the land of the dead, Deadpool was attacked by an unmasked Wade Wilson, unscarred by his cancerous regenerative powers. Now it was time for an epic ninja assassin sword fight. Wade taunted Deadpool for parading around as him when he was really just a soulless killing machine. Wade told Deadpool to give up, that he could never beat Black Panther. How many people do we have to kill before we're finally done? He asked. This seemed to stop Deadpool in his tracks and really impacted him. He put down his swords and seemed to be on the verge of a true emotional breakthrough. Oh my god, it's true. I must have known it all along but never believed it. Here it comes, the self-revelation. The revelation was... I do talk too much. Deadpool stabbed his soul self in the heart and went quiet. He dropped his swords and looked out into the heavens above before falling to his knees. As Deadpool did so, Black Panther deactivated his hologram projector. It had all been fake. Seeming to be too tired of the fighting and shaken by T'Challa's trick, Deadpool asked Black Panther, Am I a good person? Black Panther had an easy answer. No. Wade continued explaining that every time he gets blown up, he thinks to himself, Okay, Wade, you're a new man, literally. Don't mess it up. And then he always messes it up. He wanted to change, but it was just so hard after all the horrible things he had done. He wanted to know if Black Panther, who they say could see people's souls, could still see his. I'm worried that it's one part of me that doesn't grow back. This moved something in Black Panther, who realized for the first time that Deadpool had been genuine in his concern for Willie Lumpkin's life. T'Challa told Wade that he saw a man with an opportunity to make things right. He could not undo the many bad things he had done, but perhaps there was one thing Black Panther could help Deadpool make right. Together, they brought Willie Lumpkin the star cell treatment that Black Panther had discovered. It was the miracle cure Willie needed. He was going to be okay. When Deadpool asked T'Challa why he decided not to use the treatment for himself, the King of Wakanda explained that he had decided that the world did not need an immortal king to protect them, but the freedom to change and grow on their own even if it means the frustration of watching them fail. With that, T'Challa left the hospital, telling Deadpool they would never meet again. Before he could leave, though, Deadpool stopped the Black Panther to save one final thing to him from the bottom of his heart. How do the Avengers decorate for a party with an eight-foot banner? Then he warned T'Challa that if he left, it meant forfeiting their fight. Black Panther walked away, and once seated alone in the silence of his jet, he laughed at the terrible joke. Down below, Deadpool raised his fist triumphantly and shouted, Deadpool wins! See? Deadpool and Black Panther, best buds after all. Okay, maybe not the best buds, but certainly the two have developed a new respect for one another. And there you have it, Plot Armor fans, an unlikely matchup between an unpredictable assassin and a noble king. If you liked our recap, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to Plot Armor Comics for more superhero action. I'm Morse Code, and thanks for watching.